We here at the Game of Sloon Earth Tracks always support any and all that are involved in the creation and distribution of any show we feature. We'll encourage any of those watching to support the official release. Thank you and enjoy the show. Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. Comes to you live from the outskirts of the internet. This is the Gaming Saloon Earth Tracks for January 4th, 2014. With your host, Space Record 2448. And ramp it up, Salon. Hmm. I'll uh, look it through Twitter things real quick just to see if anything else popped up. But yeah. <laughs> First show 2014, folks. <laughs> yep. Uh, we do not have much to discuss pre show, though. Yeah, because. We've been really there now. We've been doing that all week, essentially. Yeah. Uh, just to quickly cover a couple of those things before we get into what we hit last week, what we're hitting this week. Uh, first up, we have a brand new rumor about uh, Gaim's ultimate form, or his final form. Again, this is a rumor, so take it with a grain of salt, but... Okay. I had a, a flu ad playing in my background, so I was confused for a second where it was from. <laughs> Alright. Uh, apparently, a uh, guy will receive a lock seed called uh, a Hell Him Lock Seed, essentially. And it can only be used by the Chosen One, which is something we've heard in the show, but. Yeah. It's a rumor. I could use information to explain, use information that's known to people to be in the show to explain its own thing. Uh, Sid fails when he attempts to use it to transform. S uh, since Gaim fused with Helheim Forest, he fuses with the Infest that reside within the Forest as well, thus carrying greater risk. Um, just from like the seeing of this, like harnessing the true power of all the fruits of the Forest and you know merging with the Forest, it's a little bit Blade and how King form works, but it's a lot more like doubles Extreme form. Because with that form, you know, they combined with uh, the memory of the planet, so they uh, Philip could look up pretty much every single guy in memory immediately and know exactly how to beat him, thus making Extreme kind of overpowered. Yeah. <laughs> but it just sounds like that, and I don't know. It, it conflicts with an earlier rumor we heard about the Apple Lock Seed and all that stuff, but... I even brought it up that I don't even I'm not even sure if the Kabokochi Loxie I'm pro I probably mispronounced it horribly the Loxie with the DJ gun I'm I'm not even sure if that's final form yet because since we're off from normal planning when people would normally have the final form pop up is going to be off True. plus we're getting two new forms back to back and it's like well, what. Well, is there any idea how many episodes this is going to run? Assumingly, it would be the normal amount. Assuming. Yeah, but, yeah, but look at Wizard. What it just came, what we're just coming off of. I mean, exactly. At fifty-two episodes, that could be what they're shooting for is trying to beat that. Yeah. And if that's the case, then geez. Which, I mean, they would have the content for it. Don't get me wrong there. Yeah. But still, that's going to be one of those geez moments. Yeah, plus we don't know if they're going to be short like that. This season's going to be short like Decade or long like Wizard or normal amount like Double O's and Forze. So it's like, I, I don't know. This is new territory for uh, everyone here because a writer's never been in this pattern before. You know, it's offset by a couple weeks now. And plus, you're dealing with a show with someone brand new to Ryder who, for all we know, may do something completely different with it. The only thing that we do know from this, and we knew going into it even, was is the fact that they are picking parts out of different Ryder shows that were good. Yeah. I mean, they're not treating it like an anniversary show like Decade was done. Thank God. Yeah. <laughs> 
But I've seen, and you've mentioned even, about different things throughout the show so far even that pattern after other shows. Yeah. And it's like, hmm. <laughs> and it's still forging its own identity as well because, well, let's face it, but you, you're you never going to be able to mistake Gaim for anybody at this point. Oh, yeah. I'm just kind of like, I don't know. I I don't even know what the final form could be. It's like, oh, Apple may be right, but for all we know, that could be not be it. Because again, the Capricu lock seed is not based off of fruit, and we know that's coming. So that may lead credence to a possible Hellham lock seed, but it may be something completely different. Well, I do. I could see that one going somewhere because. What have we been hearing, especially the past few episodes? The Chosen One stuff? Yes. And about all the writers being in there that hopefully the Forest will choose one of them and this and that and the other. So yeah. there's a reason they're saying that. Yeah. I could see it being some sort of secret that only the Chosen One can do can figure out, and when they do, they'll unlock ultimate power. Yeah. I could see something along that line. What that ultimate power is is going to be the question. Yeah. Because you think about it. It could be a belt that amplifies or gets the true power out of the lock seats. Yeah. Because you look, compare regular Zangetsu to Gaim and all the others. Yeah. Kota has said he has trained in his rider form. That's obvious because he's getting the most that he can out of it. Yeah. So who's to say there's not more power in those locks that they have? Yeah. Yeah, because we saw Sengetsu wipe the floor with all of the riders who are equivalent to him in terms of the tech they're all using. And he didn't even have to use a finisher. Where all of the riders were tossing finisher after finisher at each other, and it was bouncing off of the sum of them. So, so that tells me right there that he already knows the potential that the belt and locks together had to, had there. Yeah. I'm wondering if maybe the belts are hindering some of the locks' potential. Yeah, and maybe that's what that's why they did went to Genesis Driver to to bring out more of it, but also make it more risky. But we're we're not sure how. What is the risk? Right. What are they risking? Right. I mean, if I had to guess, it's the risk of utilizing more of the lock's powers and taking the chance of becoming an invest. Yeah. If I had to guess at that. Because we've seen the standard inverse eating the locks and turning into these powerful monsters. Yeah. So apparently the locks have some sort of strong power to them. Yeah. Maybe that's what the Genesis drivers are going to do. Let's tap into a little bit more of that. I don't know. <laughs> they get to say that. Yeah, I didn't see uh, all of the day de the fi the debut fight for Shinzen Getsu, which I'm uh, I'm gonna watch it completely all now while we're talking. But uh, it, it seemed like he was mopping the floor with all the, the Kurakage troops. Oh, he was. I mean, but. You got to think too. One that's simulation. Yeah. <laughs> I don't even think the Kur Kurakage troops there were real. I think they were simulation. That's because cool. at the very end of it, you you'll notice when you get there, the whole room turns white and you don't see anyone else there. Yeah. 
So that kind of makes you wonder right there, were they real, were they fake, what? Yeah. So I guess it's just, it's just now doing the charge shots. <laughs> but, yeah. I must say, though, I, I like the way the Genesis drivers look. Oh, yeah, they're, they're really nice. It's also nice for us to get another female rider. That's always good. There's not enough of them. Yeah. I, I know while some people are like, well, why have them been up dead? Not, not really. I mean, <laughs> yeah, a couple of them died, but we've had a lot of male riders die too. <laughs> I think some, uh, a couple of them were real because you can see a couple of them detransform right there at the end. Yeah, but that there again, that still could be simulation. True. <laughs> but they were dressed like uh, the goons they've had before. <laughs> All right. Uh, another thing that's popped up uh, again: the preview for episode thirteen is not fully up yet. I've been checking constantly since before the show started, and there's been a whole lot of nada. Neither episode 12. <laughs> but one picture has surfaced from the preview for 13, and that is a picture of Hase potentially eating a, one of the fruits. I, If this means we're actually going to truly find out whether we're all right in, in thinking that the fruits turn you into a monster... Or it's going to be maybe far worse than that? That you become some type of combination of the two? I don't know, but we'll have to wait till next week. Also, uh, next week's episode will be the, the Banana Arms for Gaim debut. I saw a couple of images for the preview that show that. No other energy lock seed riders popping up, so it's just going to be Zengetsu for now. And that pretty much is it. There's not a whole lot else that we haven't already discussed to certain degrees. Yeah. Like the, the rumors that are far worse than anything I think superhero uh, the writer Tyson film are going to do. Like I, I'm sorry, but the the rumors that came out that the, the show writers start shit just so they can be remembered is uh, that's gonna be far worse than anything that movie's gonna come up with. Mm -hmm. uh, somehow those rumors are true, and then I'm gonna go, "Fuck me, this movie is terrible." <sighs> yeah. One thing I do want to talk about real quick is something I discussed with you, which was my little theory about Sigurd. Now, as I said my R&R, &R, Sigurd's the only one uh, we don't know anything about. You know, we know what his armor looks like, and we know he can pull off a, a really... pull off a, a split. And he seems like a kind of relaxed guy based off the details of hero scans. So that's their only like really good scans of the character so far. I'll link you that, just so you can look at it. And they showed off all four energy riders, but the more I think about what Sigurd is, the more I go, he's odd man out of this group. Yeah, and we, we discussed a lot about that. Yeah. Like, first and foremost... Uh, if you were to look at all four riders, you'll notice that Sigurd's emblem is on the, the opposite side of his chest from the other three. Which, minor detail at best, but apparently from what I've read, for like an armor that an archer uses, that part where that uh, that armor is uh, apparently is uh, like where you draw. Like, you know, the, the shoulder piece, the, the big shoulder piece? Right. That's for the arm you draw with. And in, again, Sigurds is on the opposite side from everyone else. Except for Marik and that I see that, so that might throw that entirely out the window. Wait, no, Marik is on the same side as everyone else's. Never mind. But yeah, 
you have that. You have the fact that Sigurd's uh, design is based off uh, Norse warriors, which is something that no other writer till now has been based off of. Because Marika's is Chinese, Dukes is the English knight motif, and Shinzengetsu is the same as Zengetsu, which is the Japanese samurai motif. Also, uh, we just don't know anything about Sigurd at all. He's he's this unknown. That makes me go, okay, if he's such the odd man out, and when I look back at scans, there's no shot of him fighting the riders. Anyone. He's just there in the group shots. It makes me wonder, why are they hiding him so much? Why, why is he being like held off while everyone else is being pushed forward? Right. So I'm thinking, okay, it can't be a new – I don't think it's a new character per se because Marika is a new character, and they revealed her right off the bat alongside Sengetsu and Takatora – or not, not Sengetsu. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, Takatora and Sengoku. Um. I'm like, okay, it can't be Sid either because – Sid or even Hase because it's like, why would they hide that? Why hide Sid's an energy writer? You know, well, everyone's calling it right now. Well, and not to mention what I was saying. Yes, we know Sid has a lock. Uh-huh. But his has an S, and his has an S on it. I'll give that. But his looks more mechanical. Yeah. It does not look fruit-based. Yeah. I, they, uh... I, I think he can be a writer... Just not right now. Yeah, and they make way too much of an effort to show that off as being something with him all the time. Every shot he's in, you'll see that Loxy right there with him. Right. Anytime he's like talking to somebody, he's playing with that. Yeah. What did we in the – what was it, 11? Yeah, 11. Yeah. Oh, what was like, – since last scene in 11? Him closing that Loxy, zoomed in. Center screen. <laughs> Showing that it actually works. Yeah. So, I that, think he will be a writer. I, I just don't think he will be a writer right now. Yeah. He will probably be a writer towards the la last half of the season, if I had to guess. Yeah. Uh... And... Hase, I think, could. Yeah, it's like out of everyone, Hase is it, because it's like there's a reason they'd hide that. There's a reason they wouldn't come out and say, Hase's a, Hase's a Sigurd. But the only thing that I don't think's going to happen with that one is the fact of he does have too many ties with the other writers. Yeah. I don't think he would be able to fight all of the other writers. Yeah. Plus, I, I kind of wonder, you know, we, we, when Zeketsu goes to a Genesis driver, he still keeps who he is. He's, he's still Zengetsu. He just has Shin Zengetsu. Yeah. Why would that not be true for Hase? Why doesn't he become like a powered up version of Kurakage? Yeah. Like the leader of the Kurakage troops. Yeah, I agree with you on that. It's like, wait a minute. Of course, though, you can't juice a nut. That may be why. So that could ex that could still throw him into that. So, but would you not think that somewhere in the suit design there would be similarities? Yeah, there would be. Yeah, and there's not. I mean, there might not be a direct. This is this. Yeah. But you look at the different forms for guy. It all looks similar. Mm -hmm. They all look unique, but they all have similar traits to them. I would assume that would be the same with all of them. Yeah, and I don't see it. I just don't see any traits that are similar between the two. So yeah. I, I don't see that as being him. Yeah. Uh, in all honesty... I think it could be someone that we might have already been introduced to. 
just maybe not in depth. Yeah. That wound up getting their hands on the Genesis driver before anyone else. Yeah. I kind of wonder if those two random people we got that shot of and Eleven would be tied to this, but I'm like, no, because the chick's not Marika. It's like that that chick's not Marika, and I think that would be the point of this, doing that is like the hint Marika's coming, but not like fully embrace it. But I'm like, uh, okay, she works in Yagra, so why would she not know about the giant cloak umbrella? <laughs> <laughs> Uh, I I I think what's going to wind up happening is we're going to have a another Bravo incident mm-hmm. where maybe Sid was supposed to be Sigurd and then he lost the driver or sold it to someone or something and that's how he didn't become Sigurd. Yeah. Because uh, you know, Sigurd might just become you know a uh, a wild card in the group, just to be like someone who may be an energy loxy rider, but he's not the same as the other three. Because all three have loyalties to Yagra Sil. He may not. He may be just be a, he may just be a hired goon. That that's why I kind of think it maybe the belt and the Loxseed was supposed to go to Sid, but maybe he lost it somehow. Yeah. Because, like you said, all of them so far are tied together. Yeah. <laughs> He's the only one that hasn't been given any information. Yeah. And, and why hide it someone from Yagdrasil when the other three are from Yagdrasil? <laughs> exactly. <laughs> one of them we know nothing about right now. Yeah. I mean, we're completely in the dark. Yeah. And again, all three were shown off at the end of Sengoku movie battle. Again, why is Sigurd not? They purposely did that. It's like Sigurd is this unknown, and I have to think that there's a reason behind that. And it's not just because they want it to be a surprise that it's Sid. No, because people are calling it Sid. Yeah. Right now, everyone's thinking it's Sid. Yeah. Even though I don't. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Because why would he have a mechanical lock seed of his own if he was not going to be using it when he first debuts as a rider? Yeah. That just makes no sense. I mean, if Sigurd's lock was the one Sid tossed around all the time, then yeah, I could see it. Yeah. But it's not. I think... Also, wait. Let me check the 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 fruits for all of them again, because I think Sigurd is also odd man out again because of that. Because probably his is, he, his is cherry, correct? Yeah. Uh, Marika's peach. Uh, I don't remember what's du- Duke's lemon, and Zengetsu is melon. Cherries aren't fruits, are they? They're berries. You look at it that way, yeah. I was just thinking that right now. I was like, wait, his lock seed's even different. His is a fruit. Well, not really, but it's a berry. Which. Well, come to think about it, too, and you made the comment about this, he would be a left handed rider. Yeah. And apparently someone has said somewhere that Urobochi handpicked actors for this. So someone being left-handed is important to note because Urobochi apparently makes notes of are they right or are they left-handed? But because to, uh, if you notice in the pictures there, yeah, the little picture there showing him pulling the bow back he would be a left-handed shooter. Yeah. Because a right-handed shooter would be pulling back with the right hand. Yeah. So, that's even something else that 
to catch, you'd probably have to go back through all the episodes and try to figure out who it was that way. Yeah, I think somebody's tried to say that Hase's left-handed, but I'm not too sure. He seems right. He might be left-handed. Uh... I know. I know. In some of the pictures I've seen for Karakage, the staff's in the left hand. But that doesn't mean much. It's a two-handed weapon. It's hard to tell who, hard to tell which hand you're primary with when you're wielding a two-handed weapon. Yeah. But there's just this is something about the Sigurd character. I'm like, you are a mystery right now, and I think some people are really not taking you, really not seeing what's what's made you so different. Because I even think it's like, even with how the armors are that we know, why is there a new one? You know, even just try to go on that meta of a level. You know, why why is there a new armor, new base armor now, out of everybody? Yeah. You know what? I think they might be right. When Hase first transforms. He's holding the belt in his left hand. Hmm. It's gridden too, or is it somebody? Is he holding it in his right? He's holding it in his right. So Hase might be left-handed, and that might hold credence to it. Because I, I know somebody tried to say it was Sid because of how uh, uh, Sigurd was holding the lock seed, and I'm like, no, no, he, he Sigurd doesn't. Uh, Sid doesn't do that like that. Sid's not left-handed. <laughs> He's always messing with it with his right. Yeah. Trust me, as many times as they've shown that lock seat, I've noticed that he only plays with it with his right. So, if I, and I, and again, Sid doesn't. Sid, I, what, I don't see Sid doing a split. <laughs> like I'm trying to, I'm trying to figure this out by with body language because that's the only thing I got for Sigurd right now is body language. And for some reason, he seems kind of relaxed in some of the body language. Yeah. They open up there. Yeah, open up there, I think. Of course, you know, the shots there, like you said, he does seem kind of relaxed. Yeah, and, that, and that's not Sid. That wouldn't really be Hase either. No, because Sid is a... You no, know, a hothead. You no, know, he's aggressive. And, Sid is, and yeah. Sid has a a bit of relaxed posture, but it's a relaxed, very pondering posture. This seems more like a. I don't know how to describe this. It's. It's almost like a taunting relax. Mm-hmm. Like he's like, yeah, I can take you, but. <laughs> I don't really want to. Yeah. <laughs> Which is neither Sid nor Hase. Hase no. doesn't screw around. Sigurd screws with you on a mental level. Not on a not. He doesn't taunt you right in front of you. He screws with you mentally. He plays games behind the scenes. So this this might be someone. This might be like what you said. Could just be that it fell into the wrong hands right there. Yeah. Which, I mean, it wouldn't be the first time for the show to throw that, because look at Bravo. Yeah. Pierre was not supposed to get the belt, but he kind of did. Yeah. <laughs> uh, yeah. Uh, also, from what I've heard about 12, apparently... Grid and Bravo team up for something. I'm not sure what. Hmm. Um, I, we know about the quote Baron has in the preview. I'm not sure I didn't hear anything about context-wise. Apparently, me, the, the scene where we see Guy fighting a bunch of infests in the field, Michi is there, but he doesn't transform. Because he, he kind of wants to throw away the belt after what's he's, what he's found out about. Which would kind of make sense. He can, he's like, no, I ain't fighting my brother. No, 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 I ain't, I, no. And might also be because he doesn't want to play in the Yardrasil's hands. 
So th their plan might be for them to use keep using the belts. <laughs> Michi's like, no, I ain't gonna use my belt, you guys. Yeah, I, I ain't playing your game. Could be a case of he kind of has a relapse of what he's been avoiding this whole time. Yeah, he doesn't want to become what his brothers always wanted him to be. He wants to be his own person. Yeah, and, and then to find out that all of this is his brother's plan anyhow, it's... I, I could see that completely tearing him apart right there. Yeah. I, I see Michi, like, maybe over, going the extra step and thinking that, you know, he got to be... He got a belt because his brother wanted him to have a belt, not because Sid wanted to have him a belt just to fuck with uh, Takatora. Which is what it really was. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> But c considering how Michi works psychologically, that makes sense to me. Because it's like as soon as he hears Jacques Dorcel belt, his brother hits this project, he's going to think, yeah. I got this belt because of him, and I don't want it anymore. Yeah. So again, it makes sense in character. It would not make sense for him to keep using the belt considering what he said and done. Because I know, like someone else was like, eh, I was uh, complaining that Michi didn't pick up the and eh, put on the belt. But I'm thinking, no, it makes sense for him to do that. It completely makes sense for him to say the belt. I want nothing more to do with this rider business. <laughs> I think, though, I, if I had to guess, by then, within that episode or even the next one. Someone's going to talk sense to him, and he's going to go back to using it. Yeah, because he's essentially right now the secondary rider until maybe Baron replaces him in that position, but I'm using the secondary... I don't know if that would ever happen. Yeah, I, I use the secondary rider term as, well, the, the secondary rider to the primary, the, the partner to the primary rider, which is how it's been for the Neo Heisei era. So I That's use it basically in basically the second most needed character. In a way, <laughs> kind of. <laughs> but yeah, uh, yeah. I really can't wait till twelve comes out, and I'll probably check Daily Motion again, and then it'll be up, and then we still have to do the show. Yeah, I know. Uh, nope, probably not gonna be up till we're done with the show. So. Oh well. All right. <laughs> last week on the show, just to transition, we wrapped up the last half of the Phoenix farewell uh, arc. Oh. Or, no. Wait. Oh, yeah. Before. Yeah, wait. Or, before for no, Wizard. No, no, no. Two weeks before. Remember, oh. we had to skip a week. Okay. So two. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> two weeks before, we wrapped yeah. up the Phoenix arc and got our first taste of all dragon. But uh, yeah, the uh, Phoenix he ain't popping up again until the movie, <laughs> and the movie takes place in an alternate world, so it's not our Phoenix to begin with. He got kicked into the sun, and he's staying in the sun, even though some people were like, "Well, considering that he gains power every time he dies and revives, he will be powerful enough to make it back." And I'm like, and it's like, nope, because <laughs> some people were calling that Phoenix would get consumed by beast, and that would solve the whole. Mana draining issues. That would have. Yeah, but, because uh, then every time he regenerated, he would have died again, and that would have kept the mana draining. Yeah. Issue from happening. But uh, the writers decided to not do the obvious solution, and it's like we want to kick Phoenix into the sun. <laughs> Let's bring in All Dragon to do so. <laughs> but. It did more, a little, a little bit more than that because it revealed like, how harsh Arto can be. Like He's all Mr. trying to bring hope to people, but he will find a way to fuck your day, son. <laughs> it's like, if he really doesn't like you, he will find a way to make you be uh, in a lot of pain for a long time. Well, you know, I, th I think there was a couple of factors that built together that got him to the 
fuck you point. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so, I mean, I, I don't foresee that happening too many times. Yeah, but uh, if you are very cruel to Gates and just the people in general, Haruto is more than happy to return all that in in spades. <laughs> and I, we found out. Yeah. All right, and last week we covered the first two episodes of Game again, and to, I guess for us debunked the whole Yuya was the first invest that Game killed myth <laughs> theory that's going out because neither one of us are buying it to buying it now because we we looked into that scene from episode one just to be like oh is it well, no no it's just not there I don't I don't see that being it, but okay, you were telling me about something before we started the show about seeing how say potentially trying to eat one of the fruits. Yeah, that's how the still image looks. I'm not, I haven't seen it in motion previously, if, so I don't know. If how. that's the case, then we would know a more definitive and if he is trying to eat one of those fruits, then we would probably know where the whole screenshot of you you holding the blank driver, yeah, came from. Yeah, because I would say I don't think I don't think you is the invest. I think you may have been killed by the invest, but he's not the invest. Or at least that's what I think. I don't know. I mean, that's one of those I don't think, but we won't know for sure until we got hard proof against. Yeah, it, it, I just look at the everything that's everything that's tied to that type of mechanic in the world, and I'm like, it adds up here, but it doesn't add up for you yet. And I'm like, why does it not add up there? Add up for Yuya, and why does it add up for this person? And why may it add up for Hase if he actually does take a bite of it? So I'm like, that that invis wasn't mutated. It was. It looked like the dragon. You know, and the clothing's not there. You know, there was no sign of him, unlike the tunnel worker, where there was sign of him, where he ate the lock seed. Yeah. And again, well, where it's assumed he ate the lock seed. Yeah. Because we don't actually see him doing that. Yeah. Mm -hmm. We see him mesmerized by the lock seed, but we don't see him actually eat it. And the belt not being where the invest was first encountered, and I'm, it's like... Da, 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 da. It's like, things aren't adding up to me, so I doubt it. Mm -hmm. I, like it, it, it could be true. Yeah. But it could also be a really hard stretch. Yeah. <laughs> That's why I'm like, not so sure about this. And I'm trying to think of, okay, where the hell is you yet? At? Is he is he going to be like, is going to be the the Toku Tarzan of this show, or mm -hmm. is he actually dead? Just not the Invis. I don't know. Maybe some answers can come out of Red Eye this week. I haven't heard anything about the conversation between Red Eye and Mai, even though we know it's in the episode. Yeah. And, uh, it'd really be nice if we had a name. Yeah. <laughs> on that name. Because right. you call her Red Eye, but everything else I've ever seen, she's still referred to as Mysterious Girl. Yeah, I don't know what other people use shorthand for, for her. I think some people call her Blonde Mai because it's the same actress as Mai, but I'm like, I can't call her that because we don't know if it's actually Mai. <laughs> or Maze the Face of the Forest. Or Time Traveling Mai. I don't know. I call her Red Eye because that's ambiguous enough that I'm not potentially calling who she is. <laughs> and it's distinguishing enough to be able to, to be for you to go, oh, that chick that we still don't know anything about. Yeah. We just know she comes and tries to talk him out of using the belt. Yeah, and for some reason she's not going to Mai because I guess she has a connection to the three writers she talked to. 
because we don't know if she's talked to Zengetsu or not. Yeah, he's the only one. And we know for sure that she hasn't talked to Grin, Kurakake, or Bravo. <laughs> Which now really makes me wonder, like, why is she talking to those three? Why? What, what? Well, think about the opening. Those three are the heads of the three sides. Or wait, no, no, they're not. No, they're not. Two of them are. Yeah. R Ryugan's just like behind the <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> Which I I don't understand that part of it right there, but again, that that first scene, you come back to it every once after so many episodes just to be like, okay, what's making sense now? Yeah. Nothing? Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Nothing still makes sense in this scene. <laughs> like Grit and teaming up with Baron. What? The, did, didn't you stab him? And didn't you smack him in the back of the head? Hmm? <laughs> it's like, where, where, where's Kurokage? Oh, oh, I guess he's in one of the watermelons, I guess. Because someone tried to point that one out. Either like, that or now, because the belt being destroyed, he just isn't there. Yeah, and all those Kurokage, the Kurokage we see is just one of the many controlling the the, the Suica Arms gyro modes. <laughs> It's like, okay, where's Bravo? Um, I, I guess he doesn't give a shit. Uh, and it's also like it's not a game, so he don't want to participate. Yeah, and it's like, okay, wh why isn't he get to an energy arms form? It's like, isn't it supposed to be more powerful? Why is he in that? It's like, Duke could mop the floor with all of them without the driver. Why? Why is he in it just to cinch it? That that's what I'm wondering. Now we're starting to get the energy drivers. We yeah. know Zangetsu's got one. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I mean, now that opening just really don't make sense. Yeah. <laughs> I'm, I'm starting to be like, okay, I can understand everyone being in their base forms. No, without going into their upright forms off the bat. Okay, I can understand that. I can more than happy to write that one off. But Zengitsu has a completely different belt now. And while he may hold on to it, why wouldn't he go you know, all out in this case? Uh, especially looking at Gaim and like, you've got two extra forms. One of them requires a Genesis driver, which if there's no one here, maybe you kill and defeated one of them and took the part of their belt to upgrade yourself. And your little special lock seed, where's that at? <laughs> all right. But, yeah, the only thing I can possibly think of as far as if that beginning scene there is like how it is in the decade and that also turns into an end scene is maybe everything that we obtain between, between uh, all the new writers... That have that aren't in that opening and all the belts and all that, maybe all that just gets destroyed somehow. But Which, if so, that makes me wonder why I bring it in to begin with. That would not be impossible, but it would be improbable. I say that because Oz's Poots of Terra medals are canonically destroyed. They don't exist anymore, even though as many people try to – even though that suit's popped up twice more since the end of the series. Th those – all the core – all those core metals have been destroyed. You know, they, they kind of fueled the fueled the uh, the thing that happened at the end of O – end of O's and is also a part of the plot of Mega Max. But they don't exist anymore. The, the purple core males don't exist, even though they pop up in Ultimatum and they pop up in Super Tizen. I can write off Super Tizen and Ultimatum both in that case to say that so the core males still don't exist. It's just that Edgy ha Edgy can manifest the core metals and the underworld in Ultimatum, and Super Tizen is not in canon. Stop trying to connect it, people. Stop it. Yeah. It's not yeah. gonna work. But yeah, th those were destroyed, and that was Oz's final form by the end of the series. Before, if you ask me, it got replaced by Tasha Door, but 
I still accept Pitu Terra was a final form for Rose. <laughs> so th- it's not impossible, but I say it's improbable because that was just a one-off thing. And the or and the purple core medals were they were something completely different within O's. <coughs> well, and don't get me wrong by saying that is thinking that that's exactly what's going to happen. I'm just yeah. saying that's a possibility out there. Yeah. I mean, truth to be known, that opening cutscene could have absolutely nothing to do anymore with the show. It yeah. might have just been something that was thought of as a good idea. So they wanted to do something like that to show that it was going to end up being a big battle amongst all the riders. Yeah. But to me, I wonder what value that opening has to it. Because it's yeah. got to be some... There's got to be some reason as to why that's there. Yeah. And I, it, I even have to go... It's like, if this was a future and we're not going to have that happen anymore, what diverted it? You know what, though? We know that Michi and Takatora have ties to Yagurso. Mm-hmm. We know that the forest is going to pick one of them over all the others. Yeah. Who's to say it doesn't have to happen after some kind of big battle royale or whatever where each of the riders are going against each other? It's definitely a possibility, because maybe that's why no one got picked last episode. Or they did, and that choice hasn't manifested itself into something. Because, uh, you know, we had all the writers currently in the forest. Yeah. And that's even what was said. But I think I think why there wasn't a choice made, because... Zengetsu and Kota never fought. They fought before, but they didn't fight then when all of them were together. And maybe that's why it didn't happen. I bet it is. <laughs> it's like, he even fought Michi. Granted, he didn't fight him until he was unconscious, <laughs> which is what he did to everybody else. But he fought everyone. Mm-hmm. So maybe that that's the little catch is you know they all have to fight and one has to be left standing to some capacity and the one standing is the one the forest picks maybe <laughs> this is getting again speculative of just how this thing works off one line and events surrounding that line but but you think about that though if that theory's right and all of them have to have this big battle, then that could explain the opening. Yeah. Because it looks more like Zangetsu and Ryugan are just standing there watching it happen. Yeah. They're not getting involved. It's Gaim and Baron fighting with their yeah. armies. So... That's what's kind of making me think more along the lines of maybe it's that now. Yeah, because uh, it's like, who has his army. It's just like, oh, we're setting this one out. <laughs> yeah. Like, we'll take on whoever's next. <laughs> and maybe that would explain why none of the other riders are in that shot. Because we heard of five riders to start out, even. Yeah. So where's the fifth rider? We only got four in that scene. Yeah. Oh yeah, we have five Griddens in there alongside Baron, and that was the fifth one we heard about. But again, he's not prominently shown, unlike the main four. He's just Baron's lackey in that scene. So. <laughs> it's like you see him and then he's gone. 
It's like he doesn't even get to be a part of the like orange slice cut part of that scene. <laughs> that showed how unimportant he was. <laughs> yeah. Alright. Alright. Shall we transition over to Wizard now? <laughs> yes, we should. Alright. <laughs> Uh, like I said, we uh, watched the first, last two episodes, the first two episodes of Gaim last week, and this week we pick up where we left off on Wizard with 24 and 25, The Wizard's Grandmother, and Life's Choices. Hmm. This will be a uh, the beast-centered arc. Hmm. Should be interesting then. Yeah. We get a lot of mayonnaise. <laughs> yeah, Mr. Mayonnaise, as the as the beast Lockseed announces when it's opened. <laughs> God damn it. <laughs> that is perfect, though. Yeah, I swear they do armors for this. I'm, I'm going to be done because I'm like, I, I love you, Bandai. You're kind of awesome, but no. <laughs> I, I don't need to get – I don't need to stall up the premium price to get Bravo and then get the beast in armor just to make it match. <laughs> Granted, Ryugan's got two, and somehow it's not the two writers in the same show. Which really? Makes the, yeah, because uh, you know Ryugan had, you know, Ryugan already has the double one, correct? Yeah. He's also got Meteor. That's odd. It's odd until you realize what Meteor's uh, things about Meteor, and it's like, okay, this might make sense because uh, Meteor has the whole. Uh, the Wata stuff, and that fits the, the Chinese mom- motif of Ryugan because of Bruce Lee. Hmm. That, that, that's why. Huh. But still, it's like, wh- why not give this to Baron? <laughs> just, just so each writer has the primary and secondary writers of both. Yeah. Although they get very good, like the debt and the go energy lock seat. I'm gonna be like, what the f- no? Now you're now you're just playing with me. <laughs> oh yeah. Right. Uh, yeah, twenty four and twenty five. It's a beast centered arc. Just uh, thoughts going into that. If you remember the preview from twenty four, that I gave no context to. I don't. Right offhand, in all honesty. Oh. It it's been. Too many weeks. <laughs> oh. We had B saying that he was a magical girl. Huh. Does that ring a bell? Uh uh-uh. uh. Oh. We'll get to it then. Because <laughs> trust me, uh, it's in 24. It is hilarious. Oh, God. <laughs> When I say Beast is funny, I mean it. Beast is funny, and it, he is entertaining as the secondary writer to be uh, to wizard stoicness. <laughs> uh, I'm definitely going to keep open to this because, yeah, Beast is something else, that's for sure. Yeah. <laughs> him, him and his mayonnaise obsession. Yep. I, and you know what's bad? Since you told me that for Bravo's legendary writer lock, I, I'm now going to constantly think of him as Mr. Mayonnaise every yeah. time now. <laughs> yeah, the the the, the, the legend writer lock seeds are like something absolutely entertaining just to listen to because like decades got random bops in his for no reason. <laughs> it's just got random bops. <laughs> It's so th- it's a hilarious it's the most hilarious thing to listen to. <laughs> um, and like Taja Door and the and the Taja Door lock seed is completely different than the Ostato Ba lock seed because it's like okay, now there's a there's one each of the finishers is for each one of the medals of the combo. And it's got its own completely different sound effects, and I still think it's a barren one. Hmm. Yeah, because it, yeah, it it is because it goes Taja 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 to the door, to the tune of Baron's tune. Hmm. But still, it has its own different things. It's not just a rehash of the of the 
Os Tato Ba one in the vein of Taj Ador, which makes me go, they could do something really cool with the armor arm change of this stuff if they actually wanted to do it. Although I still say they need to do Forza Rider modules because those were awesome. You had you had Forza using a double style wind gauntlet <laughs> and a like Unk's hand, except it uh, uh, in the palm it was a cell metal cannon that hmm. shot cell metals. Huh. Like the legs ones weren't anything to write home about because it just let Forza do the rider kick, specifically the rider kick for each of those riders, except Kuga. But Kuga's had like Gorum's pincers on it. <laughs> but you still had all that cool stuff. It, it was really cool. All right, shall we get started with twenty-four? Mm, we shall. All right, get up ready. Yep. All right, starting up episode twenty-four of Wizard in three. Two, one, go. Oh, Gremlin. You. You. Yeah. Gremlin is a little interesting one. Sure you didn't, except you delivered, like, at least one of the stones. Also, that was also, of course, that was also Wise Man's doing. And White Wizards. Mm -hmm. <laughs> what are you doing with your normal hair? Uh, sure, you do need to. Right. Well, that kills the entire mood for him. Yeah. Uh. Hmm. Are we still going to have the Z openings? No. Okay. I was thinking we'd have the Z openings for some reason. Did we ever get to that point? Uh, I don't remember. I think we did. Okay. Wait, no, no. We had just we had said in the endings, like to end off the little previews, but I don't think we had any openings just yet. I think. Yeah, you're right. We haven't yet. Okay. So I'm like, I know it's in the openings for Wizard, but they didn't do it in GoBusters for some weird reason. Although I think Toei wants to forget about GoBusters. <laughs> it didn't do really well, like at all. Like right, like the Cure Ranger GoBusters team up has Ava Ranger and Zoo Ranger appearing in it too, and those two teams are being billed higher, what it seems like, than GoBusters. Because huh. he's being built as a team up between the three dinosaur sentais and go busters.
I was about to say, it's kind of complicated. Like I said, he, it's a bit complicated. Oh, <laughs> leave Nito with Granny. Uh, or not Nito. Leave a uh, Shimpe with Granny. Yeah, that's not a good combination there. Uh, you want to take bets on who the gate is? The granny. Mm, yep. Wow. <laughs> that's not even spoiling at this point. It's like if someone new comes into the picture immediately, it's the gate. Yep. Oh god. I'm having Kabuto flashbacks. It's the same goddamn tower that's in the show. Oh god. <sighs> I saw where somebody tried to say that Nintendo has development by the end of the series. <laughs> because he stopped saying uh he stopped saying grandma says this, he has his own little thing he says. Really? Yeah. I still don't know if I could finish that. I don't know if I can either. Granted, since my sleep schedule is fucked, I might. Because, <laughs> you know, I gotta have something to do in the middle of the night. <laughs> uh. Although, I have been watching the new Digimon, uh, not new Digimon series, uh, the one that came out a few years ago, Digimon Cross Wars. Ah. Uh. Yeah, you remember the clusterfuck thing I saw? I showed you, right? Yeah. Honestly, like cross like three, like cross two to five from what I've seen are fine. It's once you hit that cross seven, it's like clusterfuck. Because <laughs> cl cross three looks good, even cross four and cross five look good, and their uh, little offshoots look good from what I've seen. But cross seven is a clusterfuck. Huh. And then when it gets into superior mode, like big upgrade, it's a uh, it's a gold cluster. Fuck then. Yeah, he about did it out of habit. <laughs> it's like I am. I'm, I'm. I'm totally not doing anything right now. Uh, this is the, uh, this is where we get the con. Uh, this is where we get uh, the the weird thing from the preview. But, yeah. And now we just opened up a big door. Yep. <laughs> Uh-oh. He, he brought back up. That he actually threw afterwards. Yeah. Uh, that, this is one of the funny parts. <laughs> he, does still, he still does the whole motion. It just tries to make it obscure. <laughs> oh my god. Yeah. Oh dear. Oh god, you idiot. <laughs> Wait for this. <laughs> <laughs> like, like I said, I gave no context because this needs to happen. <laughs> oh 
Oh god. <laughs> he does that too good. Yeah. Oh my god. <laughs> I love how the Phantom is even like, this is just creepy. <laughs> they even go so far to do the ass shot. <laughs> oh dear lord. <laughs> Hart's just like, are you serious? Please tell me you're not serious. <laughs> I love that. Oh man, he's serious. <laughs> It's like, yeah, I can't, it's like, my throat can't take that anymore. It's like, he knows. So fuck. <laughs> oh, I love how, I love how uh, Grimble is just like, oh, the Gates Beast Grandma. I don't know. Oh, God. Look, 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 uh, Nito. Just, just explain it. Dude. It ain't gonna help now that you're not that you're keeping it a secret. He's even got the hairdo now. He even had the hairdo back then. Yeah. Yeah, because the Phantoms are totally nowhere else besides Tokyo. <laughs>
Does he always have to do that when he transforms? Apparently. Oh God. <laughs> you know, I was about to say, Nito, you're already in disguise. No one's going to spot you. Well then. Oops. <laughs> well then. Too bad you don't let the other one on. <laughs> yeah. Uh Harta, you might want to grab the bike right about now. <laughs> Although I'm surprised he doesn't do that right off the bat. Yeah. But you gonna you gonna beat them down with the paper frog? You know, he could have right then. Yeah. He was kind of wearing a disguise. Yeah, no, no one really wouldn't have noticed. That mustache must have been poorly taped on there. Yes, the weird <laughs> one. <laughs> yes, the lady wizard. I love how they slow down the shot just to try to make sure make it look like it was going at a faster speed than three miles per hour. Yeah. A hard to find a side to catch up. Hey, it's that spot from like every episode. episode? No, like six episodes ago. Oh. <laughs> it's like when the one where she got caught got uh, caught by the Phantom was used as the uh the uh, the hostage for a little bit. <laughs> they work good together when they're not trying to fight. <laughs> yeah. As Edgy said, writers are supposed to help each other. I 
wonder if we're going to get in at the end of this episode or the beginning of the next. We find out what happens when you try to scan Beast Rings and the, the Wizard Driver. <laughs> Yes. Oh, no, it's right here. Oops. Ah. <laughs> oh. Uh, whoops. <laughs> he scanned the dolphin ring, and now he gets something a little different from his liquid one. <laughs> I like that. How come you can use mine, but I can't use yours? <laughs> it's like, what the hell? And he gets his color, sp color spell. I love even when they combine the two uh, seals. Because you know Haruto's has uh, points on it. Yeah. Uh-oh. Right row. Uh-oh. Because she'll do whatever it takes to make him live. Yep. Shouldn't be trying to be the hero. <laughs> Well, then that leaves us in the with that club little cliffhanger. <laughs> so what do you think so far? This is a good one. Yeah. Oh. And for one time only, next episode, we see Beast Rider kick. Huh. Hey, we've seen that episode. <laughs> yeah, we're gonna be seeing those now from from now on if we have any time of kind of a superior I uh, superior time ending. <laughs> yeah, the, that's where uh, Kyoru Yuji picked up. Ah, that was literally the second episode. The one we saw. Yep. <laughs> so from here on out, uh, if we see any superhero times, uh, we'll be past where we watched. Hmm. All right. Should we uh, start up 25? Sure. All right. Ready? Yep. I hit the button accidentally. All right, starting up episode 25 and ending off two episodes for this week in three, two, one, go.
Man, she she go hard set on this. It's against the duration and the relationship already. It's a uh, yeah. <laughs> I just keep waiting on it. Because mm -hmm. I, I know you'll be like, uh, about it. And I'll be like, yeah. Because I think the openings make the movie look a little bit decent. I'm trying to remember if Zed was supposed to be the first appearance of Kyoryu Gold, even though it makes no goddamn sense. <laughs> then again, trying to make sense of a Super Tyson film in continuity with anything else is already bad enough. Yeah. Uh, still can't believe that the opening we have right now is the opening we get for the rest of the show. We don't get another opening at all. Oh, someone who actually understands how the spare is supposed to work. Yeah. Yeah, look who's making the rash decisions now. Oh, now we see the, the rest of <laughs> those flashbacks. What, you, you just realizing that now? Now, now <laughs> t t seriously? <laughs> Wait, we have y'all pegged as that from the get go. Yeah, Mr. Mayonnaise. Mm -hmm. <laughs> That's a neat way to get through a locked door.
Looks like they turned it around on our heroes. Looks like Gremlin's smarter than he looks. was an odd cut between those two. Yeah, I noticed that. <laughs> that was not a clean one. No. Although I'd say it'd be hard to actually accomplish that. Yeah. Strike! <laughs> Okay, they they had to like rub off whatever they got on the bowling alleys because there's no way they're staying on top of there without slipping. Seriously. Yeah, you know, just realize if. They didn't tell him. Uh, they didn't tell Haruto then. He'd have no clue where to take her. Yeah. Mm -hmm. It's an intricate little origami piece. You know, I don't think we really see any other time where uh, Harto uses Beast's uh, rings. Oh. Oh, God, she's pissed. Yeah, she got the glowy demon eyes. <laughs>
<laughs> Why do I think that's neat that they came up with this plan? It's what it thinking. probably was. Yeah. <laughs> Finally, what we've all been saying. Yeah. <laughs> that looked a little high for him to catch. Mm -hmm. Nope, gotta wait for the there it goes. Oh wow, you can actually see the wires too. <laughs> I love just spotting the little random piles of rock and just waiting for the explosion. Yeah. Hmm. Oh. Yeah. <laughs> they use Nito's rings. Yeah. Oh, now that is awesome. Yeah. Nito can, Arjo can. Oh, by the way, it actually works on both sides of the belt. <laughs> 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 so I guess we're going with the whole dinner theater thing. Mm -hmm.
you know, I don't think anyone ever realized until it was revealed who exactly Gremlin is. But uh, there's a reason his weapons look like what they are. Huh. Yeah. <laughs> I was about to say, this this fight just turned into a wrestling event match. <laughs> We're swapping opponents right now. <laughs> <laughs> I just wish they would use the, the Dragon Timer more for that, because that, that's really cool. Yep. Huh. Like I said, the one and only time we're ever going to see that. <laughs> <laughs> Ooh, that next week's one. Let's just say we're gonna find out how good of a 
actress, Medusa's actress is. So, what do you think of 24 and 25? Definitely a good arc. Yeah. Gives a lot more insight to why he's like he is. Why he's a bit of an idiot? Yes. <laughs> and even he knows that now. Yeah. We even get to see... Uh... Uh, Harto and Nito work uh, really well together, which was cool. <laughs> yeah. That's something you don't see much out of them two, anyhow. Yeah. <laughs> it was something we really don't get to see much in Gam. Yeah. Yeah, and this was, a, this was, again, one of the better arcs of Wizard, where we just have you know, an entire arc dedicated to Nito, where we just... Say hi to his grandmother, which is something we never got to do with Tendo. Yeah. Uh, yeah. We only heard a crap ton about his grandmother. Mm-hmm. Yeah, uh, it was just great to have an arc for Beast, and that uh, was cool at least to see his kick strike one time. Even though that's the only time. Yeah. It's like a hard toast kick strike. It's good to see it every once in a while. And I do mean every once in a while because we don't get to see it that often. <laughs> I think we've seen the dragon kick more than the kick strike. Jeez. Which I don't know if that's the official name for it, but that that's what I call it. Or no, I think we've seen both the same amount of times now. <laughs> But yeah, uh, again, this is another good arc. Now, next week, on the other hand, like I said, we're going to see uh, how good Medusa's actress is because uh, as far as I know, she's doubling up her roles next week. Let me check real quick. Hmm. And there's a reason for it. Uh, let me hit the wiki real quick. Uh, are they? Yes, they are. Okay, yep, we get we get to do. Yep. It's the same actress, so uh, but this actress is, is uh, doing up two roles. Although you may notice that in the preview, I don't know. Did you notice? Mm, not really. No. Okay. So yeah, we can see that, and nah, I'll let that be a surprise. <laughs> Let's just say next week's is the ending of the second episode. Next week will be a bit of a surprise, hmm. and a kind of a sign to things to come. And also, because of that, I finally get to show you another one of those custom figures. That uh, let me get his name on Facebook real quick. Come on, Facebook, fire up. That a uh, desert artwork does. Because it's directly tied to this. But if you're wondering what I mean, uh, these are artworks. There's a whole bunch of custom figure art stuff for the brighter, essentially. And I was showing him, <laughs> Tommy a bunch of them because they're really good. Like, if he yeah. sold some of these things, I'd buy it. <laughs> Yeah, uh, I said that. That'll do this week for Ramp It Epsilon. I'm Peacebreaker2448 saying good night, everybody, and we'll see you on the next round of the Game of Slim Rift Tracks. Peace out. As always, you can find the Game of Slim Rift Tracks on our site, tgstgsr.dyndns.org. 
Don't forget to follow us on our social medias on Twitter by following at TGS Rift Tracks, on Facebook at facebook.com slash TGS Rift Tracks, on Google Plus at G Plus dot two slash TGS Rift Tracks, and on YouTube at youtube.com slash TGS Rift Tracks. Also, don't forget about the mobile app. It will be updated after every TGSR with the archives for both TGS and TGSR. Till next time.